evening, all doctor. Uh, my name is Kansa. I will be the moderator for tonight's webinar, Introduction to Pain Management, organized by Pain Management Network. Um, we are so happy to can meet you in this uh, webinar. Um, this webinar is where we're going to uh, on, will be on today, tonight, 3 March and 10 March. It's a um, two webinar series that we, Dr. Novi will uh, talk about introduction to pain management. And we will have uh, seven webinar series on April. This is like an introduction before the seven webinar series on 24 April until uh, 30 April. Okay. The pain problem and introduction to pain management. Hmm. This is the CV of Dr. Tesheta Nafi. She's a physiatrist, uh, graduated from University of Padejaran, and she got a CIPS and a VTP uh, certified um 2017 and she's a ward director in Bandung Pain and Rehab Center and in Pain Management Network uh, learning organization. She is a um, World Institute of Pain member and World Academy of Pain Medicine Wapmu chapter in Indonesia. This is a clinic Bandung Pain and Rehab Center. As you can see in Bandung, this is our media social and contact. Um, this is our program, pain management program for 2020. We had so far we will have four programs for need pain management in for physician non intervention. This two webinar for introduction before. Uh, seven webinar on 24 until 30 April. Then we will have this is general practitioner and pain uh, specialist or anyone who interested in pain management can join us. And the next one we will have uh, pain management virtual conference international on 10 April until 11 April. We already had 45 speakers from 14 countries that confirm to join us on payment conference. You can uh, register yourself uh, on paymanagement.network website or you can contact on WhatsApp number plus 62 8 And then this is the basic ultrasound guided interventional pain management on musculoskeletal. It will be on 24 of May until 29 of July. And this is only for uh, specialists, uh, physiatrists, neurologists, orthopedists, and anesthesiologists. Uh, this is, we'll, we will have 10 webinar series with uh, 10 TNA sessions. Um, this is for intermediate ultrasound guided interventional on pain management nerve. Will be on 2 August until 7 of October. Uh, this is in intermediate class. We will have 10 webinars plus 10 in a session. This is the advanced class, ultrasound guided intervention of pain management on spine. Will help on 11 of October until 16 December. Uh, for more information, you can contact me from WhatsApp number plus 62 11 22 3 8 3 9. Okay. Uh, tonight we already have Dr. Novi together with us. Good night, Doctor. Uh, good evening, Doc. Uh, we already have. How many participants we had tonight? We already had 89 of participants tonight, Dr. Oh. For tonight's webinar. This is an introduction to pain management. Good afternoon to you all, dear professors and doctors. Happy to meet you again. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this uh, we I already told the doctors I already tell us uh, the doctors uh, that we already we will have four webinars program for this years and this is for non intervention mm -hmm. this is for the basic ultrasound guided musculoskeletal uh, ultrasound guided on nerve and on spine doctor yeah yeah we have all the program that uh, basically uh, we need to master the ultrasound guided interventional pain manager the basic one not the advanced one because the MSK, the nerve, and the spine has the basic one, the intermediate one, and, and the advanced one also. Uh, but at least if uh, we master the MSK, the base, uh, nerve, and the spine that we offer you, at least we can do our practice, we can help our patient. But of course, uh, if you want to learn more, then there will be other programs uh, for the advancer. Okay, what today is for, Mr. Kansa? Yeah, today we will have an introduction to pain management, so there will be no uh, lecture about intervention. Though. Oh, yeah, okay, I see. So now it's my time. Thank you, Dr. Kansa, for the uh, nice introduction. Okay, dear professor and doctors, uh, this session will be the introduction into the uh, broad spectrum of pain management. Uh, it contains some part interventional pain management uh, technique and procedures, but uh, more or less it cover all about the pain management, uh, starting from the uh, rehab stuff, the conservative rehabilitation uh, pain management to the uh, rehabilitative medicamentous treatment, interventional pain management, operative treatment, and also not all, only the curative uh, system, but also the prevention and the promotion uh, for the uh, in the pain management. Okay, I want to share, uh, I think, quite a lot of cases for you to see that it's not that simple, but there are a lot of problems that I found in my daily practice. This is the example. Uh, a male in his uh, 80th years old, uh, he is a lecturer who has suffered a low back pain for, one, uh, for 51 years. I cannot imagine I've uh, found this guy and he had already got a lot of medication and physical therapy and had already visited a lot of doctors but the pain is still there when he visited me at uh, that time the diagnosis was simple and the treatment is also very simple and in one single shot one single ultrasound grid intervention of pain management the pain was relief. So, oh, 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 oh. Do you think that there is a problem? For me, yes. This is one of the pain problems. So, that's why I'd like to share some other cases such as this. Another case is a female, 25 years old. Uh, she was a medical student and also an athlete. She has suffered uh, low back pain and hip pain for years. And my diagnosis at that time was just simple. I will not say what it was, but uh, what I highlight here in yellow, green, blue is my highlight that you must read who are they how many years they have already suffered for the pain what is the diagnosis and what i treat them for her i gave her education only what happened to uh, her lower back and i gave her only posture uh, correction pacing management pacing management means that uh, 
she has to know when to rest, when to do the activities, when to do the exercise, but without pain. And I gave her all the stretching and strengthening exercise to the abdomen and trunk muscle, and the pain uh, has gone in, yeah, not so many, not so long time. So this is all the rehab stuff that I gave her. Uh, different from the first one. The first one I gave her, I gave the patient IPM, interventional pain management. But at the second case, I gave the patient only education and uh, posture correction, pacing, stressing, and strengthening exercise. And then another case, um, a male 45 years old suffer from low back pain and has already uh, done surgery with a plate and screw but the pain increases and he came in stretcher. After the operation, uh, he suffered for two years in pain. The diagnosis, I might say that he suffered for failed back surgery syndrome, but with another multiple pain source. And my treatment at the time, the first one, IPM done, uh, has already uh, returned him to walk. And after several IPM technique and procedures, the pain was relieved. So again, is that a problem? For me, yes. So the uh, 51 years low back pain patient, the uh, years of low back pain, young uh, female, and now two years, 45 male with uh, failed back surgery syndrome, all uh, suffered from pain, but after they came to me, the pain resolved, okay? Another case, 40 uh, years old male, uh, he's from abroad, suffered uh, from pain, post-stroke pain, for seven years, has already got a lot of medication in Indonesia, Malaysia, India, China, and Singapore. And the diagnosis is just the same, but I gave in different treatment using IPM and it significantly, significantly reduced uh, the pain consumed by him. So this is another problem also. Okay, so uh, you, we treat our patient who suffered in pain, right? So what's the, the difference between the uh, 51 years suffering of pain, years, two years, seven years, all doctors has already given the patient a treatment, either medicamentous treatment, rehab treatment, operation, but still the pain is there. So is the pain different? No, the pain is just the same. So I want to uh, remind you, what is pain? Per definition, pain is according to the International Association for the Study of Pain, ISP, in 1979, Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual and or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. It's just the same, right? If you are not agree, please raise your hand or you can type in the checkbox that it is wrong. But still, it is the definition of pain. Although now, uh, there is another newer definition of pain. So the definition is not wrong, but there is still pain problem, right? Why? Because if the pain persists, we must remember that there is acute pain and there is chronic pain. What is the difference between the two? Okay, the acute pains means that the pain is there, right, at the moment, for example, and usually uh, there is obvious tissue damage that causes the acute pain. And the acute pain is uh, a protective function of our body to protect our body from damage. Before our body, our tissue is damaged, there is pain, so we know to save ourselves, okay? And the acute pain is caused by increased nervous system activity to tell us that there is something wrong with our body and the pain will resolve upon healing. While in chronic pain, the pain will extend 
beyond the expected rate of healing. And the pain itself is no longer serves as useful uh, purpose. And there is changes in pain signaling and detection. And it will degrade our health and function if it happens to us. So then uh, what happened then to the acute pain and to the chronic pain? Why can't we resolve the pain? The ISP uh, device definition of pain in uh, 2020 said that the definition become an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience is just the same associated with or resembling that associated with this is the uh, slight difference from the previous definition actual or potential tissue damage means that maybe there's the tissue damage maybe there is no tissue damage that uh, explain the difference between the acute and chronic pain and is expanded upon by the addition of six key notes and the etymology of the word pain for the further available context which are the first one pain is always a personal experience, right? We cannot say that if the Terkansa suffer from pain, I will suffer the pain if it happens to me also. But once the Terkansa said that I suffer from pain, I must trust her that she suffers from pain. That is influenced by varying degrees by biological, psychological, and social factor. The second one, that pain and nociception are different phenomena. Pain cannot be inferred solely from activity in sensory neurons because, for example, in phantom pain, the source of pain is not there anymore, but the pain is still there in the patient. So the pain and the nociception are different. Okay, and the third, through their life experiences, individuals learn the concept of pain. So, uh, for example, if I cut my finger, then I felt pain. The single, the small cut will make me cry. For the third cancer, maybe, oh, no, it's not her. Because the experience of pain, uh, I <coughs> experienced uh, in my childhood till I'm uh, old in this age is different from cancers. Okay? And the fourth, <coughs> a person's report of an experience as pain should be respected. If you say that you are in pain, I, I must believe you until it is proven that you are not suffering from pain by objective tools, okay? But still, if the objective tools cannot find that you are in pain, still I must trust you that you have pain, okay? The fifth, although pain usually serves as an adaptive role, it may have adverse effects on function and social and psycho logical well-being so uh, maybe for me the pain is ah it's something light for you maybe it's a burden i cannot work i cannot think i cannot sleep so it's a burden for some people but for others it's not a burden and the sixth formal description is only one of several behaviors to express pain inability to communicate doesn't negate the possibility that a human or a non-human animal experiences pain. So if I cry, it doesn't mean that I'm in pain. But if I don't cry, it doesn't mean that I'm not in pain. So we must have the ability to see, to feel, uh, to have the empathy and sympathy that maybe you have the pain or cancer have pain or I have the pain. So it's not that simple. Okay, so back to the... Uh, Definition, that's a problem also. Okay, so for all the happiness men can gain, it's not the pleasure, but in rest from pain. I agree with this statement uh, by John Dryden. He's a, a writer, he's an artist, but I think you agree also with this statement, right? If I have a lot of money, I have a lot of cars, I can go abroad, but if I'm in pain, I cannot. I cannot, <coughs> I cannot taste the pleasure. So if there is no pain, I will be happy. If there is pain, I cannot taste the food. If I am, I am having CRPS, for example, I don't want to have it. You touch my hand, it, it will be felt as pain for me. 
I cannot sleep. I cannot uh, be happy. Maybe I will cry a lot. Okay, so uh, pleasure will be a real pleasure if I have no pain. We have no pain because chronic pain will affect our life. A lot of people cannot sleep because of chronic pain, trouble in concentration, trouble in walking, feel depressed and limit in walking, cannot uh, do a lot of activities. So this is the vicious cycles that can be caused by chronic pain. If our patient suffered from pain, they will be worried about the employment. Maybe I will be fired from my work uh, and lack of enjoyment. And maybe the doctors and hospital visit will be will be a lot, will be frequent. So the patient will be uh, thinking, can I be healed? And related to financial uh, problems, then there will be worries, worriness. Can I uh, support my family with the financial? Uh, can I support my kids with uh, proper education if I have to resolve my problem in pain? And there might be family and relationship worries, sexual concerns also in, included in there, medication worries, work cover worries, and it is a burden for the government. So once we have chronic pain, we will get into anxiety in one point. And because of the anxiety, we cannot sleep properly. And because we cannot sleep properly, there will be an ability in coping from pain. That means the pain will be increasing and then it will cause this anxiety again, cannot sleep, and then on and on and on and on until the pain is there for, five, uh, for 51 years, such as the uh, first example. So this is our duty to get to help our patient to get rid of the pain. This is uh, uh, several years ago in my hospital in Bandung Adventist Hospital. This is in the lobby where the uh, government insurance uh, waiting room, uh, where there's a lot of uh, patients stands there. I just uh, have uh, eagerness to ask them. I uh, have a quick visit there and I ask them who are in pain. Almost all of them raised their hands, but they didn't come to me. But then after I told them, here, come to me, I can examine you, maybe I can help you. Then they uh, submit the <coughs> admission to be examined. Oh, sorry, again. So there's another barrier to access pain uh, treatment globally. The first is failure of government to put functioning drug supply system in place. The second is failure to enact policies on pain treatment and palliative care, poor training of healthcare workers. So there's a lot of cases, years of pain, but not healed. Existence of unnecessarily restrictive drug control regulation and practices, and fear among healthcare workers for legal sanction for legitimate medical practice unnecessarily high cost of pain treatment. These are all another problem. Okay, but this is not our duty except you are in uh, the policies institution. This is your problem, but for me it's not. My problem is this. The treatment of pain. Because you can see from the first, second, the third, and the fourth cases that the treatment is different, but why can't the other doctors give the treatment so they, the patient uh, are healed? Well, I can. Although in several cases, I can't also, but let's start with this, okay? If our patient suffered from pain, let's see. This is the uh, step ladder of pain treatment from the World Health of Organization. The first step, non-pharmacological methods means that I'm a rehab doctor. I have place here. I can give the laser, ultrasound, infrared, heating, and so other stuff, so many other stuff that can help the patient to get rid of the pain if it is still indicated using the non-pharmacological rehab methods. But then if the pain is still there, 
I need medication. Or together with the rehab uh, treatment, I give the patient the first medication, which is non-opioids uh, treatment usually. If the pain is still there, I maybe use weak opioids, plus minus non-opioids, maybe plus and minus uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug, or just simply painkiller. If needed, uh, for example, in uh, cancer pain, maybe I need strong opioids, morphine, I can use it. But then, if all of the zero, the first, second, and third uh, treatment cannot uh, resolve the pain from the patient, then maybe we think that we need surgery, such as the, at the third or the fourth case previously. But after the surgery is done, then the recovery cannot be uh, get by the patient. So maybe the patient will suffer all day, all night, all years, 51 years. What can be done then? So a lot of doctors haven't known about the IPM. IPM is interventional pain management that maybe can be done without doing operation. Maybe can be done at the first step or the second step according to the uh, ability of the medication given to the patient that has been given but then the pain is still there the IPM maybe can be a help okay so then together with the uh, rehab uh, treatment either we give the zero the first the second and the third or the surgery uh, treatment together with the rehab the recovery of the pain can be optimum but then because we don't know how to use it uh, either I must use the first the second the third or the surgery or the IPM technique then the, pro the pain is still there in our patient so this is another problem so let's learn uh, the pain management technique you don't have to become a surgeon to resolve the uh, pain from the patient you don't have to learn the IPM you don't have to become a rehab doctor we are neurologists we are orthopedists we are anesthetists please do our competency uh, wisely and in a very skillful manner so we can help the patient but please remember if we cannot handle it please refer it to another doctor who can maybe okay so our uh, institution uh, goal, our institution motto, our pain management uh, network motto is for a world free from pain uh, vision, for a better of life, for a better quality of life. So if you are uh, in the uh, same vision as us, please join us, okay? So, to be able to treat the pain, this is uh, what we have already known. I just want to remind you that if we have pain, the uh, pathway of pain can help us to know better in which pathway that we will treat the uh, pain. Because once we cut our finger, for example, here's the uh, stimulus sense by the peripheral nerve in our skin here, if there's breakage in the skin or breakage of the nerve or tendon or muscles, even without the breakage of the, uh, the structure there, there will be pain that will travel, the stimulus will travel to the dorsal root ganglion and the impulse will be delivered to the afferent system from the, uh, in the dorsal horn and it will <coughs> cross uh, the spinal cord and will be delivered to the brain and there oh sorry and there at the brain the pain will be perceived as pain and it will be a descending track carries modulating impulses back to the dorsal horn that will decrease the pain perceived by us so there will be a modulation of, of pain so that the pain will be uh, felt by us, by the patient. So by knowing the pathway, we will know where to cut the pain signal. 
either at the peripheral side or at the dorsal horn or at the nerve root or at the spinal cord or at the spinothalamical tract or the at the cortex uh, <coughs> uh, sensory cortex or the downward descending tract or where okay so by uh, knowing this pathway hopefully we will be able to know better once we have the pain so we must treat the pain right but not always we have to treat the pain so there is uh, objective tools there are uh, several tools to know the severity of the pain this is the visual analog scale there's a lot of <clears throat> tools to know the severity of the pain we can use it this is the comparative pain scale chart compared to the uh, first one and then after we know the severity of the pain then comes to how to treat the pain but then once the pain is there very frequently there is a uh, suboptimal management of pain because of the complex symptomatology because once the pain becomes chronic then for example if i suffer from uh, shoulder pain can you imagine that maybe i can suffer from upper back pain too and after upper back pain i can have neck pain and even headache so it becomes very complex once it becomes chronic so then uh, it is more it is harder to treat and then if there's a uh, comorbid condition presence there is sleep uh, disorder anxiety and depression again it will make the management of pain is harder and if then become resistant to many medication happen to the patient the management of pain becomes suboptimal also and if there's adverse effects associated effective medication then there's problem also so there's another problem so let's see to another case this is female in uh, her 30th years age she is an influencer and uh, suffered for autoimmune pain for two years at the time when he visited me and has already a lot of medication in here in Indonesia and abroad also. When he came to me, I diagnosed her as uh, has uh, widespread pain and I treat her with this treatment. I don't want to say it, but then the pain uh, becomes zero and she can return to normal activity so what i do what you do what they do is different right so there's another problem also okay not to say that i am better than other doctors no but let's let's uh let's think what's the wrong thing what is the right thing to do related to the pain problem so the approach to pain management is that it is a whole patient management through a biopsychological model by multidisciplinary team approach and the goal is always to alleviate the pain to treat the comorbidity condition if it's still there is if the comorbid condition is there sleeping disorder mood disorder and to improve the function of the patient to get them to a better quality of life okay so the pain management goal and principles are first is always to treat the source of pain as much as possible means to reduce or heal the pain itself resolve the mobility and to give a function speedy recovery to enhance the activity of daily living activities to prevent chronic and recurrency of pain not only to heal the pain not only to heal uh, the pain itself but the condition that causes the pain and then prevent the recurrency of the pain means, means the uh, recurrency of the diagnosis and then restore, restore and maintain physical and financial integrity means improve the quality of life of the patients okay so the principles of pain management is the first reduction of pain either by medications, either by nerve blocks, either by surgery, either by rehabilitation. And remember, after the pain is not there, rehabilitation is still needed because the patient needs reconditioning from the 
uh, deconditioning syndrome, especially if the pain is already chronic. And they need prevention, prevention from the recurrence of the pain. And if there is already mood disorder or depression or anxiety, the patient needs coping management. Management of residual pain if the pain is uh, still there with biofeedback, CBT, and so then means we need maybe psychology, psychologist, or even psychiatrist. Okay, this is another case to show you a female, 25 years old, she is a nurse, suffers from upper back pain for one week time only, but the pain is very strong. The diagnosis, I don't want to say it. The treatment is just simple. Only stretching exercise, proper uh, body mechanic treatment. She has already got her uh, peristamol. I gave her the other stuff. This is not uh, medication, not interventional pain management, not surgery, and the pain dissolves. Okay, but then I gave her education because she needs uh, prevention of the recurrence of her pain. So this, from the cases uh, that I've shown you previously, there is a gap between the cause of the uh, the cause of the pain and the treatment and the result. So there's a problem in diagnosis and treatment. Do you agree? So means that we need sharp diagnosis to be able to treat our patient from the pain. Okay. This is another story, another case. Female, 55 years old. She is a physician, she is a doctor. She was suggested to have knee arthroplasty because of her knee pain, but she doesn't want to do the arthroplasty, so she went uh, to look for second opinion. She has already uh, suffered uh, the knee pain for years. When she came to me, the diagnosis is that simple. With single interventional pain management, the pain is relieved. Okay, so again, it's not about the diagnosis, it's not um, the treatment that I gave her. So, what are the doctors do? The previous doctors do, okay? This problem also. Okay, so uh, I want to emphasize about how to uh, make sharp diagnosis by doing in my uh, daily practice, I do the, usually the orthopedist done, uh, look, feel, move, okay? Another person will do this, listen carefully, look carefully, locate for the pain source, okay? All is just the same, means that we have to do a thoroughly, uh, a thoroughly history taking, thoroughly uh, physical examination to get to a sharp clinical diagnosis if possible. If cannot, then maybe we need x-ray, we need ultrasound, we need MRI and another sporting examination or EMG to give the final conclusion. If we cannot have one diagnosis, it's okay. We can have 10 or 12 different diagnoses, but if possible, we have three or five different diagnoses, not too many, right? If we have a lot means that do you do the uh, anamnesis? Do you do the physical exam? But of course, I understand. Very frequently, we can we cannot have the sharp diagnosis. It's okay, but at least we try. Okay, about the localization of pain, the symptom and uh, sign affecting the damage nerve distribution can be uh, helping tool for us. But please remember when we have pain in the here in the deltoid area, doesn't mean that the, our deltoid is suffering pain. Very frequently, the local tendons is there, the source of pain is there. But very frequently, the local tendons is there, but the source of pain is far away from there. So it is a referred pain. The third one is related to the nerve. Maybe it is a radicular pain or because it is caused by nerve entrapment. So, Please keep in mind that maybe the source of pain is not there. Very, uh, very frequently I found that I don't want uh, to say that 
they are wrong but my patient said that where there is pain the injection is done there please be wise now because if the pain is here should i inject the uh, medication here not always like that maybe it is a gopher elbow or tennis elbow or, or even the supraspinatus tendinosis that can cause pain over the lower arm okay and very important to identify also the red flags the yellow flags the green flags the red flags mean that we have to treat the patient quickly means maybe the patient need operation refer them to the orthopedist refer them to the brain surgeon to give to get immediate treatment okay yellow flags green flags that means maybe the patient get advantage from pain and they don't want to be treated they are happy with their pain so be careful with uh, such person maybe you uh, have already met them also they are happy with the pain they are happy they are not treated uh, well maybe they are treated well but they said that the pain is still there to get the insurance to get rid from the uh, from the work okay there's another advantage that for some patients they don't want to get healed from their pain. We must be aware of that. So about the evaluation of the pain patient, we have to have a set of a complete medical record, including informed consent, and ask the patient for a pain score of before and after taking the medication that we gave them, the static and dynamic and other condition of the uh, patient. Ask the patient about any improvement. Ask the patient about their expectation. For example, if the patient comes to me in the stretcher, cannot walk for a year, and see after they, after I examine them, that I found that oh, this is a radical property with involvement of motoric and autonomic uh, aspect. I will tell them to go to the uh, orthopedist or spine surgeon to get a better treatment then I give them IPM. So I cannot give uh, exaggerated expectation why I cannot. And then the last, it, uh, maybe sometimes we can use uh, some pain evolution chart or method to help us to be uh, quicker to get to the diagnosis. This is another case of a female 55 years old who has suffered low back pain and she has already visited uh, orthopedist, uh, rehab doctors, uh, neurologist and to the, also the surgeon but the pain is still there. So then she visit another surgeon, gastro surgeon because the pain is felt till to the abdomen and she has already suffered these symptoms for four months and after she came to me to my surprise that she suffered then from carcinoma for four months so my treatment for the hip area at that time i give the treatment for the pain but i had another uh, supporting examination that Finally, I found that she suffered from cancer. I referred to the oncologist. Okay, it's not my uh, expertise. So this is another pain problem also. And another problem is found in a male 30, 13 years old, still a child. Uh, this is an undiagnosed case. And the doctor said that uh, uh, he suffered from psychosomatic states and referred him to a psychologist and even psychiatrist. Well, actually, this patient suffered from certain case and the treatment is very clear because uh, this patient has already suffered the pain for three months and heard the doctor said that uh, your pain is not real. Then he is depressed at the time and requires support to return to school so please be wise to treat our patient our word may be as sharp as a knife to our patient okay 
So if we cannot treat the patient, please be wise to tell something that may be not there in our patient, but have uh, give the patient such a burden. Okay, so this is another problem. Another problem I found in a female uh, young athlete, and she's a doctor also who suffered from pain for two years. She is a doctor that can uh, help herself actually, and the diagnosis is very simple, but because she cannot do the pacing treatment, she cannot rest, she thinks that I'm okay with the medication. Uh, the pain is again and again there. So I gave her IPM, pain is relieved, but the pain uh, relapsed after one month because she cannot uh, do the prevention. So what is needed by her is only education, posture, pacing, stretching, and strengthening for the knee. That's all. Not always the pain need medication. A lot of patients only need education. Okay. So this is another problem. And another problem is pain treatment gap. We very frequently cannot uh, choose the right medication for our patient. From this uh, chart, we can see that 64% pain scale is in moderate pain scale. Means that it is in uh, 4 to 6 uh, scale in 0 to 10 scale of pain. But you see here, only 15% patients got the correct treatment using, medica using medicamentous treatment. So it means we must learn more about the pharmacological treatment. In the FORNIP, for non-interventional pain physician uh, webinars that Dr. Kansa had said previously, we have seven, seven uh, webinars. Please join us. We will learn a lot about this stuff. Although you don't want to become an interventional physician, although you don't want to become a rehab physician, if you are a GP, if you don't, you don't want to become a surgeon, at least you know what to do in your area, in your expertise. So our patient can be treated better, and we cannot, if we cannot help, then we can refer the patient to our colleagues who has the expertise to do the better treatment for pain for our patient okay so again i like this uh, uh, chart very much after we do our treatment the first the second the third and the pain is still there and the surgery is not indicated and the pain is the please think about the ipm but the ipm is not the sole treatment needed by the patient maybe the pain uh, can be resolved using only the exercise. Maybe the pain can be resolved using by simple medication if we know how to use the medication. But if the surgery is needed, please don't hesitate to refer the patient to the surgeon. So the pain will be recovered, but either the pain is resolved by rehab, uh, conservative treatment or medication or IPM or surgery, please remember to give the patient rehabilitation. and. Please remember also to give the patient prevention, prevention and promotion treatment so they know how to treat their body so the pain will not come back again. So then after the pain is not there, the patient is already smart enough to treat their pain. If, for example, now they have back pain, but in the future time, maybe they have headache, maybe they have knee pain. They know how to prevent uh, the pain to become uh, chronic or even they can cure themselves without going to the doctor by doing the promotion so all is not about the curation itself but prevention and promotion and rehabilitation okay 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 this is a question from dr Mumtaz. he's a gp from tagal okay the question is i've learned in past that in some acute Pain, especially acute injury like sprain, strain, contusion, etc., need RISE treatment, right? Yeah. Which is used cold modality like ice to reduce inflammation. But in the other side, healing process need inflammation itself. So, is it RISE still relevant now for acute pain, doctor? Mm, still, 
there is price protection rest eyes uh, compression and elevation but it depends on the healing process you are very right the healing process uh, have the inflammation stage and then the remodeling phase and the recovery phase in the very acute phase where the pain is very severe we cannot let ourselves uh, suffer too much so we need medication we need uh, the price technique to reduce the inflammation so the inflammation is just there to help the healing process but not to make us suffer if you remember the Drayden statement it's the the get rid of the pain that make us happy not the pleasure from that we have car or uh, pretty faces but when we are free from pain that we are happy but please remember not uh, giving too much uh, too much cut to the uh, inflammation states because we need still we still need the inflammation process to come to the recovery the inflammation is still there although we give eyes don't be bothered too much okay the inflammation is still there For example if i have a bump here of swollen head because i bump my head to the door if i put ice here will the swollen resolve in one day two days no the swollen is still there but at least the suffering from the pain is reduced but the healing process is still there because we have the inflammation states still there but not uh, hurt us too much okay 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 yeah okay we will continue to the stepwise approach to pain management so if it is simplified from the uh, chart from the WHO uh, treatment of pain it can uh, be summarized as this rehab rehabilitation or medication and surgery and between there's IPM intervention and pain management so when we need IPM the indication of IPM is when either the pain persists for more than one or three months of optimized pharmacotherapy and rehab so please remember uh, optimized pharmacotherapy and rehab if it's not optimized yet please use the pharmacotherapy and rehab uh, treatment first except if it is too long and if uh, it is already in terrible uh, side effects there to drug therapy or there's aversion to taking long-term medication or if the case is not suitable for surgery or if the surgery is indicated but the patient doesn't want to do the surgery something like that please think about the interventional pain management okay so about ipm what is ipm ipm is interventional pain management which is a subspecialty of subspecialty of pain management so it means that you have to enter the management subspecialty before you can learn the subspecialty but in many countries such as indonesia also the subspecialty of pain management not not uh, there in every specialty so such as me from rehab there may be subspecialty in ipm maybe fellowship but in neurology or in anesthetics there is subspecialty of pain management in my specialty in uh, PMRA scope uh, it is said that it is also specialty uh, in my department IPM is minimally invasive technique to obtain permanent or long-term pain relief but although it is minimally invasive technique the risk is very high especially if we are not skillful in doing it so please uh, learn the IPM first before you do the IPM it is a very new brand developing rapidly and gaining popularity worldwide so not because uh, you can earn a lot of money from IPM but because you can treat the pain because having the pain uh, suffered by the patient for 51 years okay 
but not always IPM is needed. In my cases that I've shown you, the pain is already resolved by simple resting, simple or pacing technique, simple exercise. Okay, there are a lot of uh, type of pains that can be treated using IPM, either acute or chronic pain. So from post-traumatic pain, post-operative pain, labor pain, acute low back pain, neck pain, from head to toe, and including also a hepatic and post-hepatic neuralgia, the neuropathic pain. And who can do the IPM? Belong to who the IPM is? The spine surgeon can do, the orthopedic, the neurosurgeon, the neurologist. In Indonesia, I'm talking in Indonesia, anesthesiologist, the physiatrist can do. But abroad, the radiologist, the rheumatologist, uh, even their radiologist. radiologist, yeah, can do it. So it depends on uh, from where country you come from, please refer to your country a policy. Okay, but for me, as long as you learn about how to do the IPM, you are eligible to do it. But legally, I don't know. It depends on the uh, policy in your country. This is all patient, uh, patient IPM setting uh, in my place. Uh, I just get a simple room where I can put the ultrasound and I have nurses. I have the tools to do my intervention procedure. I can have the RF, the PRP, the prologue. I get the medication there. I have the emergency toolkit there to help the patient if something happened. Because as I said before, that the IPM is minimally invasive procedure, but the risk is high. So please be aware of that. I want to share about another case, male 30 years old, back pain and is in wheelchair he has already referred to a surgeon to uh, to have operation but uh, he refused and he has already in pain for three years with a lot of medication and he browsed in the internet how to treat the pain and he came to me and the diagnosis very simple but has already she has already uh, motoric and autonomic involvement from the radiculopathy. So I refused him uh, to be treated by me, but because he said that I don't want to do the operation, please help me. So I do simple intervention. To my surprise, he can hold the defecation, he can urinate, and even he can erect in the morning. So because this improvement, she pushed me to do another intervention. Please give me PLDD. PLDD is percutaneous laser disc decompression. I said, I don't want to do that. It's, it's impossible. Please go to the a surgeon. I don't want, please do it. Uh, he is not uh, so uh, uh, has uh, ability in uh, financial. Actually, for me, uh, he's poor, quite poor, but because he wants to be healed, he said, I operation, so I don't want to do it, but because he insists that he want to do it, I do it, that yeah, this is just uh, magic for me. It's not the case that I usually do, but yeah, there is something that beyond our uh, skill, beyond our knowledge. And then I referred him to the physiatrist. I referred him to the rehab doctor, although I am a rehab doctor. So we need rehab. Because I have no time to do the rehab stuff, I referred him to the rehab doctor. So this is another problem. Another problem that maybe the pain is very uh, obvious, but we cannot do uh, quite uh, enough uh, to help the patient. But if do it with our heart, that maybe there's magic that can help the patient. Okay. This is a case of female, 70 years old, 10 years suffering from low back pain. 
the diagnosis similar to this uh, previous one and I do the different uh, treatment I do the caudal epidural and I give the patient the RF transparent minimal RF and the pain is resolved what I want to show you here that the diagnosis is the same but I don't need to do exaggerate uh, IPM treatment if the simple treatment has already give uh, the patient uh, healing why have I give the uh, higher treatment which means the higher cost and higher risk also okay so this is another problem also so I want to us to learn together to give the patient our best without having the patient to be broke okay so I think masih ada masih ada means there's still more okay this is our center this is the operating theater in uh, Bandung Adventist Hospital where I work there also I want to show you another case 55 last case yes yeah, 55 years old female is a doctor uh, he she has a, a frozen shoulder and she has already suffered five times stroke and hemiparesis I don't remember the left side if I don't uh, if I'm not wrong and he suffered for already 11 years hemiparesis and uh, shoulder pain but at the time I, I found that the diagnosis is very different and I said at the time that you suffer from your stroke that causes your left hand cannot move but it's not frozen shoulder and give the treatment uh, for the myofascial trigger point at the upper back to my surprise the movement restore 100% so this is my missing case also i think that it's because of the hemiparesis but then the hemiparesis is not there it's it's caused by the myofascial trigger point syndrome no pain and i gave her rehab i want to show the uh, video if it's possible please do it Okay, is this she? Okay, uh, I have already permission from her. Even she uh, share this video in her medsos. So I'm not afraid of uh, being insulted because of sharing video of my patient. She's very happy sharing this because she's happy. Uh, resolve from the pain suffered for 11 years that is uh, previously thought as caused by the frozen shoulder and because of the stroke that has already suffered by her for five times even me at that time thought that the left arm cannot move because of the hemiparesis but actually the strength is five and the cause of the pain and the cause of the hemiparesis only by the myofascial trigger point at our left upper back. Can you uh, open the uh, sound? Cannot? Oh, I want to. Actually, you can open her Facebook. Her name is Mia. Mia, Mia, and Mia. Mia andut hobi moto. Yeah. In Bahasa means that he is fat and his hobby is taking picture. Mia andut hobi moto. You can find, yeah, this one, okay? You can find her. If the voice can be heard, uh, it is very, uh, really a pleasure to help her because after the treatment, even she, didn't realize at the first time that she can move her arm. Me neither. But then, to a sudden, she said, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Why? I said, 
you're pain free and you can move your arm yeah that's why because previously i cannot move my arm no i can mm. alhamdulillah ya allah she said so again you can see my goosebumps here <laughs> i have goosebumps at that time oh it's not magic but it's because i and the previous doctors didn't know that the an inability of her uh, to lift her arm is caused by the neoclassical trigger point at the left upper back. Not because of the hemiparesis, because of the stroke, not because of the frozen syndrome, simply by the neoclassical trigger point syndrome. So I can make a mistake, you can make mistake also. So let's learn to uh, make ourselves better and better and better doctor to help our patient. Let's go back to my slide. I haven't finished yet. Uh, this one. So my take home message is there is only three bases of pain treatment. The first is diagnosis. The second is again diagnosis. The third, again, is diagnosis. No more than that. Other than that, what we need is our our skill in our department. If you are a neurologist, please use your expertise as neurologist. If you are orthopedist, use your expertise as uh, orthopedist. If you are a rehab doctor, please use as your expertise as a rehab doctor. But then, to be able to treat our patient better in pain, we need more knowledge of step loader of pain management, autophysiology of pain, about the conservative rehabilitative treatment, although you are not a rehab doctor, you must know this, and then conservative medicamentous treatment. We are all be able to do the conservative medicamentous treatment, right? But please use it wisely and in a strict manner so we can uh, have the vision also that if the treatment is already optimized and the pain is still there maybe we need to refer the patient to another uh, department okay maybe the patient need ipm maybe the patient need operative treatment we must be able to know that and we need the knowledge also about how to prevent the recurrence of the pain and we must be able to know promotive treatment if you don't know please refer it to the rehab doctor they know a lot of the preventive and promotive treatment for pain and means that we have to know the referral system for pain treatment for a better pain treatment don't let the patient suffer for 51 years please do not and because I am a pain physician, please don't think IPM is the panacea. No, IPM is not a panacea. It is only a part, a small part of a whole holistic bio, psycho, social, and rehabilitation program. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Please enjoy us if you are eager to learn more. We are going to learn together. Thank you, Dr. Nafi, for a very interesting uh, pain introduction. Um, we have three questions, Dr. From yeah. Dr. Rahman. Uh, good evening, Dr. Rahman. Dr. Rahman interested in a case, a female athlete physician, 24 years old, with diagnosis osteoarthritis genu. This patient is still young. What can cause the pain? Yeah. For this case, okay. thank you, Dr. Rahman. Uh, in the previous case and updates, I've already mentioned about cinta. Cinta, cinta is the cause of the pain. The first C is congenital cause. Congenital cause means maybe the pay uh, the patient suffer from uh, scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, or as uh, equinus faru, something like that, that at one point will cause pain. This patient has no congenital case. Okay, the second 
uh, one is cinta. In bahasa, it means love. C, I. The I is uh, infection. Something like, uh, what infection can cause pain? Uh, mm, pharyngitis, okay? Nephritis. All itis, itis can cause pain, right? But this uh, patient has no infection. The third is C I N. N is neoplasma. Neoplasma means um, tumor. She has no tumor. Okay. And then C I N T. The T is trauma. Okay. The sudden trauma, the acute trauma can cause a fracture, a tear of the tendon, tear of the muscle. She suffer not from the trauma. But the last C I N T A A in Bahasa uh, I uh, slip of the tongue it S O O is others. Others is always becomes the uh, keranjang sampah. What is keranjang sampah in English? Garbage, trash bin. Okay, but actually. The, this one is the main cause of pain actually in daily practice. It is caused by overwork, overload, repetitive trauma. Okay, uh, she is an athlete. She is a soccer ball athlete, although she is a female. So she bumps her knee very frequently. He runs a lot. That causes the arthritis in her knee. And she has at the time a lot of uh, fluid flexion in the suprapatellar recess. So it is caused by overwork, overload, and repetitive trauma. The usually cause, the most common cause of musculoskeletal problem is this O. C-I-N-T-A, eh, C -I -N -T -A, cinta, cinto. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the problem is this one. So I told her not to uh, use her knees too much. Means please don't do the soccer and the mother. She doesn't want. Okay, I'm an athlete. I want to do. It. Okay, just go. Then the pain comes back, and then because she's a doctor, uh, we have a nice discussion about what she has to do, and I have the ultrasound. I can show her what happened to her knee if he, she doesn't follow my instruction. And after she realizes that, oh, that will happen again and again, okay, I will retire from the soccer, I'm a doctor, I will do another sport. So now she do the swimming. So it's just like I become psychologist. I have to give CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. So I have to give education to the patient. I have to explain to the patient why the pain is there. So what I have to be done to her and what she has to do because uh, the pain will be there again and again if the patient doesn't understand what happened to their body. Okay, thank you. And we have another question from Dr. Regina. Uh, she is from Bandung. Thank you, doctor, for such a great explanation. I really adore and enjoy the way you ah, present today. You. Yes, yes. <laughs> My question is, could you please tell me does the duration of pain has a role on how we choose which cases need intervention or IPM and which one is not? Thank you, doctor. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Regina. Thank you for your operation. I've mentioned it before here. Uh, this one, okay. So, uh, I like these two charts this one and this one actually, okay, because those two charts show us when we have to treat our patients in our field and when to refer them to another doctor. Okay, for example, if I'm a rehab doctor and I, uh, such as Dr. Rahman asked me, uh, uh, why the patient suffer for knee OA in such a young age? Because of the CINTO and because 
The patient, although she is a doctor, she doesn't know what happened to her body after I explain the pathophysiology to her, then she knows what to do, then she knows how to treat her body better. Means that I, as a rehab doctor, I can give the patient uh, medication, I can give the patient the posture, pacing, uh, treatment, but if I cannot do the interventional pain management at the time needed by the patient, the pain will be still there, okay? So when have a patient to be given IPM, this one, the indication, if the patient proceed for more than one or three months, depend on what medication we give to the patient, after optimized pharmacotherapy and rehabilitation given to the patient and the pain is still there, please uh, put in mind, maybe there's a place for interventional pain management, not always. And if there's already intolerable side effects to drug therapy, maybe the patient need IPM. And uh, if the patient has already taken the medications for long term and there's side effects, okay, maybe there's a place for IPM also. And maybe the patient has to have surgery but they don't want to or not suitable for surgery for because of maybe uh, diabetic or high uh, blood pressure, then the surgery cannot be done. Maybe intervention pain management can take place. So if we look back at the previous chart, if this is not uh, strictly to be like this actually, maybe we can jump to the IPM at the first place. Okay, so this is not always to be uh, sequencing like this, but in acute phase, we can jump to IPM straightly. Even we can uh, suggest the patient to surgery at the moment because it is an emergency case. But usually the pain uh, happens gradually, means that we need the uh, zero state, the first state, the second, the third, and so on. But please remember in all states we need to have management and please remember also that we need the, uh, the knowledge about the pathophysiology of why the pain is there so we can give the prevention and promotion for the patient after the pain is resolved and for the uh, uh, further the future times when the pain is there the patient know how to prevent it to become chronic and how to promote their health so that they will not have the pain like that so we have four indication for thinking about the IPM treatment yeah and this is an, uh, another question from Dr. Dr. Stephanie I want to ask you about the evaluation of the pain I think pain is depend on personal view. Is there any objective tools or how we can assess that our therapy has already decreased the pain? And when we should do the re-evaluation of the therapy that we give? Okay, slowly, I must read it. Uh, evaluation of pain. Okay, about the evaluation of pain, please join the fourth nip. Uh, the FORNIP webinar is the four non-interventional pain physician webinars that actually is the basic to the next step if you want to join the interventional pain management in the ultrasound credit or fluoroscopic credit webinars and workshops. It is open to non-interventional pain physician because if we are not intending to uh, do the intervention, we must know it also, including the uh, question that you uh, asked here about the uh, evaluation of the pain, it will be explained there. And about the personal view about pain, yes, I've already explained it uh, previously that the pain is very subjective and it is very personal. I agree with you then. It is agreed uh, internationally that uh, pain is very personal, so we must very carefully in evaluating the pain in our patient. There is objective tools. The simple tools in the, is the rating rating scale, the fast, the visual analog, analog scale, like this. Uh, this one. 
it is very helpful. You can use it in your daily practice. The pain is between 0 and 10. The worst pain possible is 10. And if there's no pain, it's 0. Ask the patient <coughs> in which uh, severity that you feel the pain. 1, 2, 3, just point it where. If the patient said it is 7, you must trust him. If the patient said it is 3, you must trust him also. But then we must uh, do the objective measurement, which is the physical examination. So that we know that maybe it is malingering only, or it is exaggerated by anxiety, or actually there is no pain actually. It can be possible, okay? And the no, no. therapy, the therapy means that we must know the uh, length of the or the duration of the pain suffered by the patient, the severity, the comorbidity, the uh, the linkage because of the body is uh, one biomechanical linkage. So if the pain is suffered by supraspinatus, for example, the pain can refer to the elbow, even to the arm, such as the last case. Okay, the pain is here actually at the upper back, but the pain is felt to the till the fingers. That the pain, even the doctors and she is a doctor actually also think that it's caused by the hemiparesis that caused by the stroke. So the treatment is actually depends on the source of the pain. Means actually depends on the diagnosis. So I've shown you that the rules of the IPM is this one either you are going to use the IPM or not the first rule is diagnosis the second is diagnosis the third is still diagnosis okay and when we should do the re-evaluation once that for in my uh, department for rehab uh, this uh, not rehab I want to show you if you're a GP if you use ibuprofen you know in how many days that the pain will resolve okay if uh, I have uh, uh, upper back pain if I use ibuprofen if the pain scale is five in how many hours the pain should resolve Better cancer? if I have upper back pain and I use ibuprofen the pain scale is five in how many hours the pain should resolve one day if the pain scale is five, oh, five, five, one hour, yeah, one hour should be solved. Oh, five, five, five. Right? If the pain is already uh, become chronic, the uh, pain scale is five to six for one month, for three months, upper back pain. If I use still ibuprofen, I use muscle relaxant, I give her roborancia. In how many days you expect the pain to be resolved? Three days. Three days. Hopefully, or one week. If in one week time the pain is still there, we must think about giving another treatment, right? So we change the treatment. We change the uh, painkiller, we change the medication. There will be the pharmacological treatment session also in the FORNIP webinars that uh, we will be delivered in seven sessions so join us okay next question is about the ibuprofen from yeah. dr pitoyo yeah the question is how we deal with a patient that is that his or her pain hold keep increasing for example now paracetamol is enough to reduce his pain but next week he needs ibuprofen or methanamic acid to reduce his pain and next month maybe he needs tramadol for reduce his pain keep it okay what case <laughs> what case usually this is related to neuropathic pain in musculoskeletal pain usually we must such as the previous case there is already a certain uh, painkiller a certain NSAID that is needed for a certain case okay if we if the pain scale is only Wait a moment. If the pain scale is only three, okay, this is what I told my patients. 
If the pain scale is 3, means that the pain is, uh, the first is 0, 0 is no pain. 1 is slight pain, uh, but the pain is not there anymore at that time. The pain scale 2 means that the pain is uh, more severe than 1, but they're not there anymore. Okay, but the pain, if the pain is still there in 30, uh, mean, uh, 30 seconds, one, uh, 1 minute, means the pain is already have the scale of 3. Okay, and it is felt continuously. But once uh, the position and the uh, or the work or the activity is uh, is stopped, the pain will not be there anymore. Means the pain is three. The four is more than three. Although I stop the activity, I stop the sport, I stop the position, the pain is still there. Means that's four. At the scale of three, once the pain is still there after I rest my body, then I need medication. The very simple medication is paracetamol. Once you take the medication, the paracetamol at the pain scale of 3, the pain will resolve in the duration of action of paracetamol. How many minutes? There will be explanation in the 4 nip session, the second or the third seven. session? Uh, this is okay, so join us. Okay, But once the pain is already 4, the four means that you need stronger medication than paracetamol, but you can still try in the uh, pain scale four and five. But maybe you need higher and stronger medication such as ibuprofen and so on. So it depends on the severity of the pain and for how many days you suffer it, because. The longer you suffer from the pain and the higher the intensity means the inflammation is more there. So you need a stronger medication. So it doesn't mean that the patient needs a stronger and stronger medication, no. Because you or we uh, delay the healing process. So the treatment needs stronger and higher dose. But it, it's different in uh, cancer pain. The morphine will be needed more because the, uh, the inflammation is so severe that uh, cannot be helped by other stuff except of the morphine. And because the morphine causes uh, addiction, so the patient will need higher dose. But paracetamol, ibuprofen, there is no addiction of paracetamol, there is no addiction of ibuprofen. So please be wise of saying that the patient needs higher medication, uh, higher intensity, uh, stronger medication. No, it's because that it is wrong treatment from us. Okay. And uh, from Dr. Peter, Toyo, it's the cases that you asked is about chronic low back pain in his clinic. Yeah. Okay. So please join us so we can discuss further. Okay. But in my uh, opinion, in my practice, what happened is like that. Low back pain. If you say about low back pain, please think about the 51 years suffering of low back pain in my first case. Nobody can help. Nobody can help. Only IPM can help. And I want to give a comment, doctor, yeah? uh, because uh, before we know how to treat the patient, we all we have to educate ourselves more about where is the pain source. Yeah. So we can educate the patient. It's not all about the pharmacological. And something that I learned from Dr. Novi is education is something is a part of therapy. And cognitive behavioral therapy is something important because. If the patient can understand what is the source of pain, he won't understand and he won't change the behavior, then he will suffer the pain again and again. Yeah, correct. <laughs> okay, and then I think this is a last question for our webinars tonight. And I want to... No other question? No, no. Okay. So, before we can 
uh, treat your patient, your pain patient, and before you can know how, where is the source of pain. Please join us on Fornic webinars. This is a um, uh, webinars that can be joined by general practitioners and other specialists that who wants to know more about pain management. We will. These two webinars is an introduction for pain management will be held on tonight and 10 March. And the next one is seven webinar case series. We will learn about managing musculoskeletal pain, managing pain on head and neck, managing spinal problem, managing cancer and stroke pain, pharmacology of pain drugs, man managing autoimmune and widespread pain. It will held on 20 until 30 of April. If you, if you want to know more about this uh, webinar, you can click on website painmanagement.network or you can send WhatsApp on plus 62811223839. And this is our post international program virtual conference. This one is great. Yeah. This we'll, one is great. We'll held on 10 April until 11 April. We will have 45 speakers uh, that has a qualification FIPP, CIPS, and from we all we also had we we had World we, Institute of Pain. We take Taiwan, Taiwan, yeah. Taiwan, yeah. From Taiwan, with uh, chapter from Taiwan, and this is you can read more information on pain management network. We will talk also about the regulation, the ethics about yeah. pain management there, not only the IPM itself. Oh yeah, and we also have we will have real patient cases. Real patient cases. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the learning life. Yeah. yeah. And this is the program for basic ultrasound guided intervention pain management on musculoskeletal. In Indonesia, IPM is only uh, legally do by the five physicians, uh, physiatrists, anesthesiologists, neurologists, spine surgeons, and orthopedists. So if you are from abroad and you want to learn and you are not five of these physicians, you can join us. Uh, this will be on three months learning program. We will have uh, the topic is Ultrasound guided on shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand, hip, knee, and ankle. And we will also have drug pharmacology and regenerative medicines. The next one is basic ultrasound guided on nerve. The theory will be waist guided IPM on brachial, brachial plexus, lumbosacral plexus, and chronic pain. Radio and the last one is radio frequency. This is also from 2 August until 7 October. You can contact me in WhatsApp number for more information or Instagram PMN study and website painmanagement.network website. This is the advanced ultrasound guided IPM on spine. We'll held on 11 October until 16 December. It will have mastery spine anatomy and ultrasound, ultrasound guided on lower back, thoracic spine, and uh, neck. All three uh, ultrasound guided learning program will held on Monday and Thursday, every 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Is there any question? No. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nafi. I think this is uh, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, pain is such an interesting thing to learn yeah. because we can see the patient smile again. We are increasing his or her quality of life. It's such a pleasure for me to learn pain in this clinic, Bandung uh, Pain Rehab Center. Yeah, please join us then. We have a motto, Indonesia Bebas Nyeri. Indonesia Bebas Nyeri means uh, <laughs> Indonesia, Indonesia pain-free. Pain-free pain Indonesia. Okay. But 
we broaden our vision becomes uh, a work free, free work from, from pain for a better quality of life okay yeah i hope you enjoy this webinar and hope you can uh, have a wider point of view regarding uh, pain treatment to our patients and very nice to see you and okay well, one more thing if you want to learn more and uh, you can access the recording on youtube private we will share it to your whatsapp number approximately one week from now that's it for tonight thank you so much for your participation assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye 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 see you next week <laughs>